the sun is shining, the birds are chirping, the bacon is sizzling. Welcome to the Daily Swole. Welcome, everyone, to episode 122 of The Daily Mother Swole. And I keep on saying I'm going to do this. I'm not going to say the word swole anymore. I'm just going to say The Daily Mother and then point to my bicep because that infers swoleness, obviously. So now it is Labor Day. It is Monday, whatever day of September it is. And I didn't even know it was Labor Day until earlier this week. Someone said, oh, it's Labor Day on Monday. Really? All right. It doesn't matter. There's always a holiday. There's always something going on. There's always something going on. There's always some way they're going to sell you a Toyota for a discount, or um, they're going <laughs> to they're going to release a movie on Friday so they can get a long weekend and clean up at the box office. So it's all commercialized. Anyway, I know a lot of you are probably going to be grilling, barbecuing, spending time with their family. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. And like I, I always talk about working and hustling and grinding and doing this and the other. You know, I mean, I'm going to. You got to enjoy a little bit too. I'm not saying don't enjoy your life and just always be working and be like Scrooge and miserly. But Team No Days Off just means in terms of, let's talk about fitness in terms of days off. Let's talk about fitness in terms of holidays. Let's talk about fitness in terms of using holidays as an excuse to do shitty things. It's like having a birthday. It's like having any kind, like any kind of holiday or the weekend. Weekend is considered, some people have weekly holidays. They call the weekend. It's kind of like they treat the weekend as like a holiday. You know, oh, it's Friday, it's Saturday, it's Sunday. You know, I don't work out on the weekend. Oh, it's Friday, so we're going out. You have this kind of, there's this connotation in this country and with the mentality of people, I'm sure it occurs in other countries as well. It's just a personal thing uh, where people use these things as excuses. They use holidays as excuses. Oh, Labor Day barbecue. Oh, it's a barbecue. It's once a year. Oh, it's a Labor Day. Oh, it's the big barbecue. So I'm just going to stuff my face with every piece of crap I possibly can. If you're happy with your, and I always say this, if you're happy with your body, if you're satisfied with the results, if you're good with what you are, and you're okay with eating the way you're going to eat and you understand, then fine. It's always those people that don't see progress or that are struggling or that have, oh, I never, I can't lose weight or I can't get you know my abs tight enough. You need to suck it up. And smack yourself upside the head and realize that you're just lying to yourself. Because if you're happy with where you are, then you're happy with where you are. And then do what you want. It's your life. And I'm not going to talk about gluttony in America and just greed and just, you know, sloth and just eating and being disgusting. It's your body. When it comes down to it, we have choices. You can eat better foods if you want to. You can eat crappier foods if you want to. It's what you want to do. If you want to eat junk, then eat junk. If you want to eat healthy, then eat healthy. It's really like... What do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do with your life? If you want abs and you don't have abs and you have to do some other things that maybe, you know, someone that has abs doesn't have to worry about. Like for me, if I want to have a pizza today, I can have a pizza. I'll still have abs tomorrow just because I have created that momentum in my body. I've created that momentum, but I put the time into it. I put the work into it. So perhaps I can slack a little bit in certain instances and I can have a piece of cake. I can have a brownie and get away with it. If you're struggling to get to a certain point and you have a goal and you haven't yet reached it, you have to be tighter. You have to be tighter mentally and physically with what you do, you know, restricting yourself, cutting down calories or eating certain foods or, you know, you're, you know, let's say uh, you're lean bulking where you're trying to put on muscle, but put on minimal amounts of fat, then you have to be really strict and you have to be really, you know, intricate. It's just this connotation with a holiday or a day off being an excuse, being an excuse to let everything fly. And we could use the regular weekend as a normal example because, some, like I said, some people treat every day on the weekend, every end of the week as a holiday as because you're not, your routine's different. You don't have work. You don't have necessarily an obligation of somewhere you have to be. But it's important to create those obligations. You create those obligations. You create that need. You create that necessity uh, to be somewhere, have to be somewhere, like the gym. You make it part of your schedule. I understand if you have kids or family – and you have to take care of them. Like you're, it's, things can change on the weekend where you have to take care of your kids. Your kids aren't in school. You have nowhere to put them. Well, work out with your kids at home. You can still be active. You can still do stuff with them. You can squat with your kids overhead. You can throw them up and make them a weights for a bench press and hold like two kids. They'll love that. Kids love to you know climb around. Kids love to be active. You know, you do a push up, and I've seen you know fathers do push ups, and they have both their kids sitting on their back. 
I mean, tell me that's not going to be harder push-ups when you have 60 or 70 pounds on your back. You can make things more challenging. You can make things interactive and still have family time, but still get your workout in, and it's a good example for your kids. So you can make excuses if you want to. Yeah, it's not the same as going to the gym and doing like heavy bench pressing or heavy deadlifts, but in all reality, it's only one day or two days or three days. It's not the end of the world. You're not going to lose all your gains. It's not going to, yeah, you might not see the most progress, but you'll stay active and you'll keep your metabolism up and you'll keep your body fit and your body mobile. So it's an excuse. Bottom line, it's an excuse. Of course, human beings and people in general are going to find every different possible way to make an excuse to not work out or to eat bad food. If you're aware that you're making an excuse and you're doing it and you're consciously doing it and you're like, okay, well, I don't care. I'm going to do this. Then do that. It's fine. It's your life. Again, it's your life. If you're happy with it, if you want to eat pizza every day, eat pizza every day. Just understand you might have a heart attack. You might just, you know, have diabetes. I mean, you know, if you're willing to take that on and have your family take that on, then, you know, that's your life choice. But don't blame it on addiction. Don't blame it on You know, oh, I'm addicted to food or blame it on some fucking disease. Like, oh, I have bulimia or have this. Yeah, I get it. And I sympathize in a way with people that have that. But I also feel like we blame, ah, we we, we blame like a disease. We call it a disease when it's really just like the imbalance between fucking willpower and, you know, lack of, you know, I almost feel like, and we call that, oh, that's a disease because the willpower is so low it's just addictive and they can't stop. And it's, you know, and then there's, there's people that smoke every freaking day and they could just go cold Turkey like that. And they never go back. It's like, how come some people can do it and some can't? I know there's science behind. It. I'm not trying to get into the whole deep psychology of it. And I'm not trying to, you know, if anyone that's watching has an issue like that or has had, I'm not making light of it. I'm just saying that there's a lot of aspects that people don't want to, talk about, you know, with political, you know, it's not politically correct. It's not nice. You know, it's a sensitive issue. Well, let's get it out in the fucking open. Stop making excuses and just eat better. Like I said, if you really want it bad enough, you can do it. If you want it bad enough, you can do it. If you want to gain weight bad enough, you can do it. You're not gaining weight. You're not eating enough. Well, you're still not gaining weight. You're not eating enough. Oh, but I'm eat. I eat so much and I work out. I'm not getting enough weight. You're not eating enough but I have a real tough time gaining weight. You're not eating enough. It's that simple. I'm not losing weight. You're eating too much. Well, I I do this. You're probably eating too much. You're not eating the right foods. You're not lifting weights. Oh, but I do lift weight. You're probably not lifting them correctly. I mean, there's, you're a human being. You're a human being. And like, we're all human beings and we're all pretty much the same. We're look differently and we might have slightly stuff on the insides. And yeah, there are anomalies where you might have, you know, things missing in your DNA strand that, you know, promote excess, you know, fat retention, you know, and thyroid issues. But most people don't have those issues. And most people either get those issues because of their bad habits, or they just think they have these issues. And they use as an excuse to not really try hard. And the trying and the effort is really underestimated. It's not easy. I think a lot of times when I'm really brutally honest, people don't realize in general, and you might be one of them, you don't realize how strict and how intense, you know, you can possibly get, you know, people call that obsessed or people call that, um, you know, it's just like, you know, you're really anal, you're really, you know, meticulous. It's like, yeah, it takes that. It takes that. It takes a level of obsession. It takes obsession. Why is that a bad word? Why is to be obsessed with something a bad word? Any great invention, any great thing that's been ever created in this fucking world has been built off obsession. The iPhone that you're watching me on, Steve Jobs' obsession, you know, Einstein and, you know, the light bulb and the fucking car and Henry Ford, obsession, absolute obsession. You don't make, you don't change the world by just kind of be like, hmm, I think I'd like to make, you know, a car with wheels. I think I'd like to create a way for people to create objects faster and make it, I think I'll make an assembly line today. It's like people don't just come up with this stuff. I think I'll make a light bulb. Uh, you think you'll relentlessly try to make a light bulb thousands of times and fail until you finally fucking get it right. I mean, that's not like a casual hobby. That's an obsession to do something, to achieve something. So if you want something bad enough, you have to get obsessed. And there's nothing wrong with that, especially when it's about your health. Uh, and this is a positive. You could be obsessed about video games. You could be obsessed about a hobby and something you're interested in. That's fine. But it's no different. 
if you want to get good at playing the piano, you got to practice. If you want to get good at fitness and losing weight and having a fit body, you have to practice. It just happens to be that practicing with fitness encompasses almost every aspect of your life, your sleep, your water intake, your eating, you know, your activity, your schedule during the day. It just takes a lot more of that practice. You know, practice the piano, you have to sit down and play the fucking piano. I'm not saying that's easy, but you know, when you practice the piano, what do you do? You do that. You don't have to, I mean, it does help, of course, if you sleep right. It does help if you have good nutrition. But I mean, you know, if you didn't eat well the day before, if you're a little dehydrated, you'll probably still play the piano okay. You might not have endurance to be able to sit there for eight hours, but you know, if you're, let's say you had a little bit, you had some potato chips, is it going to affect your ability to play the piano? I mean, neural impulses, who knows? But you know what I'm saying? It's like, you could be overweight and play the piano. You can have a lot of different variables occur and you could probably still practice the piano fine. Uh, with fitness, if you want to see progress, it's like every little thing has to be aligned. You have to be doing so many things and that's what's overwhelming. People overwhelm themselves and then they just kind of give up. So make sure you're not making excuses. It's a holiday. It's a weekend. It's a day. It's a day. The sun rises. We call it something. There's some good sales. There are probably some good movies on TV. It's the only difference. You might not be working. Hours might be different. The gym might close earlier, so forth. Uh, my gym closed today. It went from eight to one. It was open from eight to one. And I couldn't go after the Daily Swole because right now it's 1230. I wouldn't be able to get my workout in. I went to sleep at like 3, 330 because I was doing videos and I was doing all this other stuff. Uh, I went to the gym this morning at like 830, nine o'clock. I had to get in. I went earlier and I don't normally work out in the morning, but it was fine. It was great. I went to the gym and I got it done. Boom. That's how it works. Okay. You adjust, you adjust and you react and you get it done. It's not a question. It's, ah, uh, this has to happen. So I'm going to do it. Okay. I'll stay for a couple minutes after. If you have any questions, uh, I appreciate the input and remember, enjoy your holiday. Enjoy the time off. If you have it, uh, if you want to, uh, don't use it necessarily as an excuse to just binge and just eat like shit, but not saying you haven't earned it, but just understand that it's a day like any other and any other day and the weekend's going to come and just use this mentality. You can still go to your barbecue and enjoy, but understand that if you're enjoying and if you're enjoying via food, which I always say food's a tool, it's not for enjoyment. If you're enjoying with food, understand the impact that it can make on your body, especially if you're just starting to see progress or you're just trying to change your body and change your style of eating. Um, it's going to make more of an impact than someone who's already on a roll like myself. So if you're just trying to teach your body and train your body to do things correctly, uh, a bump in the road like this is going to be much more significant. So be aware of that. And we'll talk more about that moving forward with the Daily Swole. So I'll see you tomorrow, 12 noon Eastern time, as always, for episode 123 of the Daily Swole. Again, I'll stay for a few minutes after on Busker, Periscope, and Facebook Live. I'll stay for a few minutes. And if there's no questions, I'll just shut them off. And I will see you tomorrow. Enjoy your time. Enjoy your Monday. Peace out. I'll see you tomorrow.